For three years, we have lived with one ear towards the loudspeaker. Whether we have liked it or not, the radio has been part of our lives. As the fortunes of war have shuttled to and fro, we have turned the dial from one place to another. To these hands we have owed, this is London Calling. Threading fine wire for radio speakers came easily to fingers that were used to needle and thread. The coil winding machine with its 14 threads was not very different from a sewing machine. Practiced fingers fed the insulating paper into the machine and a steady hand cut the coils into lengths. But radios were not enough. There were more urgent needs. An enemy was at our gates. Our men needed arms. This factory had the answer. Instead of radio speakers, it made munitions. The skilled hands now fit fuses into grenades. 18 separate parts are put together in a twinkling and in the right order. Efficiency at every stage is important. Men's lives depend on their thoroughness and the men can rely on them. They work with speed, but they work with care. Every grenade these women assemble is another brick in our wall of defense. Every box is the woman's answer to those who want to destroy our homes or our people. When the New Zealand engineers invaded a small Arabian village, they didn't destroy the homes or the people. They merely watched the villagers drawing water and decided that it was better to use their own machinery. The Bedouin tribesman wanted to know what it was all about. He soon understood that the engineers were there to build a wharf. The position was explained to the head man. Though they had wonderful machinery, the engineers were in a hurry. This was a rush job and they wanted the help of the villagers. So Arab and New Zealander toiled in the scorching sun of that rainless country. The New Zealander was busy, but was fascinated by the Arab's knife. The Arab was not quite so busy and couldn't resist watching the engineers tug. The name on the bow, M-A-O-R-I, what did it mean? Not even the old man could tell him. 